Let's go. Let's go. First, I'm gonna just give give some words real quick, and then I'm gonna play the actual news footage, and then the um basically the little conference with the with the police. So it's gonna be a little extensive, but I want y'all to pay attention to what's being said of what he's saying. And 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 me personally, I still think they full of shit, especially the Chicago police. All of them is fucking crooked. I don't give a fuck. There's a, there's some good apples. But it's, it's surrounded by a whole bunch of corrupt apples. You dig what I'm saying? But any motherfucking way. Only thing I got to say is, man, it's beyond ridiculous out there, man. Since last night, the other night, 40 people were shot. Somebody sent me this footage earlier this afternoon. Then when I go finally to, to do this video as I'm doing right now, I go to the, um, the Chicago, I think it's Channel 2 or Channel 7 News website. And now we're saying it's it, it was 59 people that were shot and four people dead or it's eight people dead fucking ridiculous fam now i want to say something do y'all really think that's gangster that y'all killing each other like that do y'all really think that's tough yeah nigga we kill each other all motherfucking day man that's gangster look at this lady falling out right here look at this scene look at that you tell me that's what you want your mother to do or that you want your grandmother to feel like that and collapse on the floor like that? Do you want your son or your daughter to feel that way? Do you want somebody else's daughter to feel that way? What's so gangster about that, son? I know there's gonna be some people who's gonna say, shut the fuck up or give me that, that resistance. It's fine, I understand that. I'm not trying to hurt you, family. I'm not trying to disrespect you, family. So if this, if this, what I'm saying rubbing y'all the wrong way, that evidently you have some working to do on yourself. It has nothing to do with me. You understand what I'm saying? Look, we all come from that 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 uh that poverty stricken projects and below the totem pole um urban areas, man. Come on, son. We all got a similar story, family. Shit, I seen my first my first body at the age of four years old in best style. I listen, I can I still can recall somebody, I will never say who, told us to go up the block. And just to leave for a second, cause two people was arguing. We go to my block on Clifton Place. We come back. The motherfucker's laying on the floor with a with, with a bullet in the back of his head. And police picked him up. When he lift up his head, you seen the hole in the back of his head. This is at four years old, five at least five. One of those ages I was, and I remember it very vivid. So I seen I seen that body very 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 young. But at the end of the day, son. What the fuck? This is not gangster, family. You killing your own people at disproportional numbers. It's crazy. And me personally, I think police be having this have something to do with this shit too. Cause I I, I don't wanna just think y'all little niggas is just killing each other. 50 people here, 90 people there, 100 people there. It can't be. Police drop guns in crates in alleyways in Chicago. They talking about they care, they want to get the guns off the street, but when they take the guns, months and months down the line, kids going to find a whole crate of guns in the alleyway again. Just recycling. You know what I'm saying? Girls being found in the dumpsters. So people already know what, what type, how I give it up with, with, with this kind of shit like that, but this shit is getting out of hand, man. But anyway, I don't want to hold y'all too long, but I'm just saying, family. God damn. Is it really... That serious, y'all have nothing else better to do, or y'all don't want to do anything better. I'm gonna end with this it is very easy to pop off, it's so easy to shoot a nigga, it's so easy to get into that type of stuff. But it's very hard to refrain from doing it, it's very hard to think positive, it's very hard to want to get out of that type of life or get away from that influence. It's very hard. So you rather do something easy that can land you in jail or dead or something hard, but that will keep you safe. Doing, living longer and being there for your family and, 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 and doing something right and, and getting money the other way. You dig what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I'm making this more longer than what it is. I just wanted to say something before I play this fucking, um, 
this footage right now. So with that being said, hey, I'm just a goddamn YouTuber, right? All Viral Access Media family. At some point, we gotta motherfucking start saying something. And these rappers too, man, I hold a lot of these rappers accountable. I hold a lot of them niggas accountable. With that being said, I'm out. Let's get into a piece. Final check on the surge in weekend violence. Diane Pathew is at Stroger Hospital with an update. Diane? I have a lot to tell you guys, not a lot, to time, a lot of time to tell you. Here's what's going on. I have not seen a Stroger Hospital this loud and so emotional in a very, very long time. According to Cook County Hospitals, the statement says that Stroger did not at any time go under a lockdown in its trauma unit. This is a 100% contradiction to what Chicago police have now confirmed to me three times. Chicago police say Stroger Hospital is on a trauma lockdown. They are no longer letting any family members other than immediate family members inside the trauma section of the hospital because of all the shooting victims and all the family members showing up here. More coming up later today. As of this morning, more than 5,500 illegal guns have been taken off the streets this year. We have an environment where people do not feel any repercussions for using guns to commit violence, and thus these weapons flow freely onto our streets. It's important to keep in mind that we were very early in the investigations into the incidents that occurred last night, so I can't go into specifics. What I can tell you, however, is that we know that some of these incidents were targeted and are related to gang conflicts in those areas. CPD detectives are working around the clock to investigate the incidents, build a timeline of events, and identify any shoot. We'll also be conducting coordinated enforcement missions to target the individuals that are driving the violence in these areas and focus on where we believe retaliatory violence may occur. We've implemented a data-driven policing strategy that's helping us predict crime before it happens and put officers in the right places at the right times. We've seen a citywide reduction in murders by 25% so far this year and a reduction in shooting of over 30%. 30 That's not a victory by any means or any stretch, but we continue to head in the right direction. We will continue to focus on our ways that we can make our streets safer while reducing gun violence and protecting the public. Um, just to put a little context to this before um, I take any questions, we all live in this city. We all want this city to be safer. The policemen who um, are out there protecting those streets, they live in that city. I have kids that go to public uh, high school, so we all want a safer city. So I'll take a few questions. Um, in the last 24 hours, we do have some totals. Uh, I, can get those inf I can get that information to you. a saying that I always use, I'm not going to pour syrup over shit and tell you it's pancakes. We're, we're working super hard out here to try to reduce this violence, but what we have, uh, and when it's very hot outside, what we have are multiple uh, areas with crowds, 100 people, 150, 200 uh, people at these areas. Once, a, once an incident occurs, uh, an offender or some type of rival gang sees a large group of people, it may be a repass, which, which is what happened in the 6th District, where the eight people were shot. They take advantage of that in, uh, opportunity and they shoot into a crowd, no matter who they hit. So it's very hard to get all those people moved. And when we move that group, we come back as 50, we come back at maybe 100. So now we're just kind of on standby, trying to just almost watch a party go on. So when we disperse those people and we have to move on, what happened in the 6th District, just to be a little bit specific, a foot chase where they were chasing the offender with a gun. So a car was sitting there at the repass. They move on, and then the, uh, the offenders take an opportunity to shoot into a crowd. So, yeah, by no means do these uh, 
these figures or these statistics mean that we've got a victory. What I, what I promise you is that we won't be defeated. I mean, I promise this city that we won't be defeated. We won't be overrun by that small group, that small element that's committing these reckless acts. We will not. I promise you that we will not uh, be defeated. We need more help from our uh, judicial system. We need more help from our federal partners, and we're getting it, but we won't be defeated in it. concerned about making it home at night and if they're concerned about making it home at night more than arresting people why are more people not getting fired or let go these are things i just want to try to understand my commitment is not to eat until a week of peace comes to this city can this police department have some higher commitment than somebody like me and this this is sad man 11 year old is shot right and a 17-year-old is shot in the face and dead. I just don't know when is it enough. Should we bring in help from the outside, like maybe homicide from New York, homicide from L.A. that mm -hmm. seem to solve this? This is bigger than Chicago at this point. And well, let me let me let, let, let me let me address that. And, and I appreciate your commitment. Uh, I don't know what that's going to do, um, but I'll tell you that. Everybody has to be accountable for it, not just the police department. When you have 11 year olds or you have a 13 year old that's past two o'clock, they should be at home. So everybody has to be accountable for that, not just the police department. And I understand what you're going through. You have strategies. We, we, we don't just all of a sudden willy nilly think this up. We take time out and effort to come up with different strategies. I have spot shotter on my phone. So I know when the shootings are occurring. I have a SDSC room in my office, and we do, we do. We can't, we can't, we can, we can never measure. We can never measure what we prevent. We can't measure that. What we can see is that less victims. That's what we look at, less victims, and that's how we measure our success. Is it good when you have someone, a loved one, who shot? No, I promise you, it's not. But that's how we measure our success. No, we we're, we're behind the eight ball a little bit sometimes in trying to. Uh, get people or get people incarcerated repeat offenders we're behind the eight ball with that The one I was speaking of was in the sixth district. It was a repass for a person who was killed. Oh, okay. Right. Um, this one was right. Right. Wow. Right. Um, it's, I, I know Well, most of the time they see someone that they're a rival gang and they shoot at that person. But when you just shoot aimlessly like that, you're shooting into a crowd. So we can't always determine exactly. Sometimes it's just they want to shoot at people who are in a certain area. So it's not always targeted, but most of the time it is. It's a targeted thing. Some, some people were arrested in that area with weapons, so that investigation is still ongoing. I can't, I can't really talk to the specifics because the detectives haven't put all the fo uh, video, they haven't talked to all the witnesses, so I can't. The, 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 go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. We, we, we use precision strategy to try to make sure that all areas are, uh, are covered. Like I said, when it's hot and those hot, large crowds come out, uh, we're taking videos of this to show the public just how, how uh, thick it is and how just how big the crowds are. Um, the people at Lollapalooza are people who would have been RDO. They would have been off. So they're not people who would have been on the street anyway. So we're not losing the resources to Lollapalooza.
Well, I've been doing this for over 32 years, so in each of those years, we've had hot weather. So it's not just about being hot. Sometimes it's about the culture, uh, again, about not being accountable for the actions, not having a feeling of any repercussions will happen to you. So again, that's where we need help from some of the other partners that are involved in this. Everybody has to be accountable. If you've used, uh, had a weapon, I'm not just talking about some kid who may be scared to go to school, but if you've used a weapon and now you're not incarcerated and you go out and you, you feel that like I can go out and do that again. So just because it's hot, that's not an excuse. Um, I, I know the mayor is very concerned, and when you say other other people, I'm, I'm not a politician. All I know is that the boots on the ground are, are trying as hard as they can uh, to be accountable for what's going on. We're moving different people to different places in these different districts. Uh, some of the areas that we had covered where we hadn't had uh, violence, now we had a, a violent the one in 15 where the uh, four people were shot. We hadn't had any violence in that area in a while, and it, it was kind of uh, kind of gang related with a nexus to narcotics. So those are some of the things that we face. But as far as anybody else coming to help us, I, this is something that we're gonna have to do on our own. Except for, like I said, the federal partners and the judicial system. Hip Hop West TV, please like and subscribe.